Yes, uh, the pieces that I did uh, the last couple of weeks, um, today I like to show you how I glaze my pieces. Uh, this is the one that we made the very first week. With the, uh, the clay, we stick it in the dry clay. And now we're gonna spray the glaze over. But you wanna show the, uh, the rock kind of feeling. So I am gonna use the masking tape to tape it. And I already done three of them already. And I just wanna show you one, the last one. Just get a masking tape. Kind of a tape on the edges, and if you have a little bit of overlap, uh, the, the edges, you can just use a needle too, or kind of squeeze it in. Okay, and you can also tear apart too that some of the spot that is too much, you can tear it apart, and get a, a needle tool or some use the fingernail to kind of squeeze it in, so that it shows the. Uh, uh, it covers only the uh, the rock. Oh, what about wax resisting? Uh, well, wax resisting is when you spray it is still going to uh, stick it on the surface too. So, uh, um, plus the wax resisting, sometimes it get messed up on the spots. And it's hard to get it off unless you put it through the kiln and refire it. Or you use the same paper to sand it down. So, just using the masking tape, this is a very, very good tape, so it should be easy to, to cover it. Okay, so, four of the rocks already covered by the masking tape. Okay. And when we uh, glaze, in, I'm gonna use the spray booth to spray the glaze. And uh, before you spread it, you wanna glaze the inside first. Okay. So let me glaze this one. Um, we have two different buckets of uh, glazes. I'm gonna spray one over the other one. Okay. Uh, this is the green one. I'm gonna spray it over the brown one. So you spray the brown one first. Uh, depending on how much green you want it to, if you don't have more green, you can emphasize that spot that spray a little bit more of the green glaze. If you don't have a more brown, you spread more brown on the bottom portion. I usually have a little bit of a, uh, more brown on the bottom and a little bit more green on the top. That's my, my idea of uh, spraying the, the glazes before we do that. Carefully. <coughs> it's hard to pour it back in, that's why I have a bigger uh, container here. So we just go and roll it slowly. And then you pour out slowly. Glaze cover all over, so you kind of rotate it while you pull it out, okay, like that. And if you have a little bit of a glaze coming out, you just use a sponge to breathe real quick. Just wipe it. You can leave a little bit of uh, glaze on the rim, but some of the spot that has a little bit drip, it will show. So I usually like to use a, a sponge to kind of wipe it out. One for the first one. Um, this is the uh, second week's project. So again, pour the glaze in. Okay. Since, what do you do about the holes in the side? Yeah. So for the holes, when I pull it out. I'm using my finger to seal it. Okay, 
So I, this is kind of a small, so you can kind of shake it on the inside. And when you're ready to pour out, put your finger there. Um, there's a little bit glaze coming out, just sponge it out. Okay, sponge it out. I don't know how this code, I keep using this, but I don't know what, <coughs> what this. Aspirator? Aspirator? Yeah, it's for baby's noses. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I usually uh, use that and just absorb a little bit of a glaze and just put it on the bottom here inside of my foot. Just pour in enough glaze so I don't need to pour out. Pour the bottom. So this glaze is something you brought from your studio, at home, right? Yeah, this is my recipe. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how would you say it's different than glaze here, other than a different color? Uh, well, I don't know about. I haven't tried any other glaze that will get the same result, same effect on my speckled pieces that you can just see it on my postcards and all my major pieces. I use this kind of glaze a lot, yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, prepared preparation for uh, spraying your pieces. You always want to glaze inside first. So now let's move on to the back that I, I'm gonna use the spray booth. And before I spread it, I usually like to get my pieces to lift. So I will get something so that it will be a little bit taller. So when my spray gun emitted, the bottom portion, I will be able to go to, to get it. Usually the bottom, you will get less glaze because it's on the bottom, it's hard to get it. So you can turn it upside down and kind of emphasize the bottom, but if you have something to lift it up you can go stay down and then use the spray gun and spray it so the bottle will be covered by the glaze so that's the idea of getting something to lift it up yes do you sieve your glaze before using the spray gun like we do with the other glazes yes okay. yeah especially if you want to spray it you need to screen it okay. yeah maybe your final screening like 80 mesh this is the Eddie Mesh. Okay. Alright, so let's move to the back. Um, start to so you can spin like that. Um, you will be able to, to uh, get the pattern.
one of the times I've sprayed before, it actually started running a little bit. How do you avoid that? This distance? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, good question. Yeah, when you spray it, if you aim it too close, it will have a little drip, right. too much glaze at once or at once. So uh, you want to have maybe a foot, depending on how much the pressure mm -hmm. of that uh, compressor. Uh, if the pressure, like this one, is very, very strong pressure, so uh, you see that first uh, when I spread it a little bit closer, but I I noticed that it's too much glaze, so I kind of go at a distance, okay, uh, maybe a, ha a foot, or a foot and a half to start to spray it, okay. So I told you that limited touch, so for inside, you can touch on the inside. Um, you can see that the surface becomes kind of hairy. Okay, a little hairy. See that? So that's the, uh, the stage I would refer it to. Or maybe even thicker. Okay. Especially uh, the top portion, I would uh, maybe put it back and spread it a bit more. Get it even, even thicker than that. What's that thing? Yeah, I know that glaze. Yeah. So if you think glazes, one of our running glazes in here to use, then you would put on less or? Yeah, depending on the, the glazes. Yeah, you know, if the glaze is kind of runny, yeah, you you want to make sure that. Uh, if you put it on the top portion, it will be fine. Even if it's the runny glaze, you uh, give it a little bit of clearance on the bottom portion, and then the glaze is not going to affect it or run it down all the way. So, uh, but this glaze, I know that it's, it's a very dry glaze, so it's, it's not going to run at all. So, yeah, you can put it a little bit thicker. You can experiment, okay? But when you put it very, very thick, it might become black. Okay, dark, black. But uh, if you put it uh, at the right amount, uh, it will be very nice and beautiful. Uh, especially uh, if you have a porcelain, you might get gold speckles. <coughs> If you have a white clay, you can try it. Just, uh, just put one glaze, the green glaze. Okay. Lift it up, especially. Lift it up so I will be able to get to the point, the bottom portion. So let me change back to the first can. This one, uh, if you come closer, you will be able to see it. I put it a little bit thicker than that, the other one. Okay. So yeah, this is the uh, thickness you wanted to apply for the glaze. And uh, this glaze, it's better if you spread it. If you try to dip it, you won't get the same effect. Okay. So if you don't get the uh, nice kind of uh, different kind of uh, colors 
spread it the glaze. Okay.